If someone asked me to put together a sim racing setup with the best value for money, pounds paid per performance possible factor, the Fanatec CSL LCs would be a strong choice of pedals. The CSL LCs of course mean in the CSL pedals with the load cell kit bundle. They're not perfect, far from it. There are things that could easily have been improved, but they do a lot of things right, and most of what they do wrong is easily and cheaply rectifiable, which adds up to a pedal set that can get you 90% of the way there at a sensible cost, which is basically the motto of the Fanatec CSL level products. These pedals will quite happily stay beneath your feet in your first phase of sim racing, right through to the part where you eventually leave them behind and move on to premium stuff be it years, months or even weeks for that to come around, depending on how hard you fall for sim racing. Don't think it won't happen to you, it comes for all of us. As always, please check the links in the description if you're out shopping for these. Using them makes a big difference to me and a massive thanks to those who have done so in the past. I bought these CSL pedals with my own dollary dues, they weren't sent for free. Here's a quick roundup first and I'll go into things after. Firstly, they're built well, almost entirely metal, apart from the pedal faces. They might not be luxury, but they definitely don't feel flimsy. The feel of the throttle and clutch pedals is pretty basic, and they are noisy too, weirdly. You can fix the noise issue with 10 minutes work, and third party modders make items to fix this too. The load cell brake is very good, but for some reason, Fanatec chose to make it really stiff, which will not be how a lot of you would prefer it. Once again, third party mods come to the rescue to provide softer inserts because for some reason Fanatec don't include or even sell alternative insert kits. They don't stay upright without supports, so no free standing them on the floor, you'll definitely 99% need a wheel stand or cockpit of some kind. So let's zip through it. First things first, the CSLs use a modular design whereby the pedals are separate units which attach singularly to the heel plate which acts as the backbone of the set. You assemble the pedal unit together yourself, just like how you would with more expensive pedals. This gives you some options on how you would like your pedals laid out. You can stick them close together, far apart, offset, you can forego the clutch pedal altogether. This is one of the big positives of the CSL pedals, particularly over the more expensive club sports, which don't allow you to do this. If you happen to have a cockpit that's got a central column, being able to space the throttle and brake far apart is a godsend and can make things much more comfortable. With a vast majority of the assembly being made out of sheet metal, CSLs seem built to last. The electronics are encased within the steel shells with very little of it exposed and in general, durability and toughness aren't the CSL's weak points. And if you're upgrading from entry level pedals like Logitech, then you should be delighted with how grown up they seem. They're built neatly overall, there's very little electronic or spring clutter to be seen and everything's really well hidden, because in truth there's not a lot to them. For me, the main shortfalls of the CSLs are in the refinement of the user experience. In other words, the CSLs kind of feel exactly how they look, a bit cold and harsh. The throttle pedal feels really plain and generic, it's not as nice as it could be and that's worth talking about because the throttle pedal is the throttle pedal, it's the same one on the entry level 80 euro base spec CSLs as it is on these 200 euro CSL LCs. The main problem in my eyes is that the spring Fanatex used to resist the throttle pedal is a little bit too light overall and there's too flat a curve to give the throttle any real character or progression the further down your foot goes. It's almost as light at the end of its travel as it is at the start and for me that meant I found it a little bit trickier to feel the throttle in part throttle corners. For example when you exit slow turns and you need to call upon just a sliver of engine power, it's too easy to slightly overshoot the amount you wanted or not give enough. If the throttle spring had a more progressive force curve that started off lightly and ramped up resistance the further in you went, it would feel more like a throttle pedal usually does and be easier to modulate when things call for a light touch. Saying all that, it does the job and I adapted to it fine after a while, but some of you might find it's just a bit too light underfoot. I know that if it had a more distinct spring curve it would be much easier for me to be precise with part throttle and that would help the CSL LCs perform above their pay grade without costing anything extra in the factory. You can buy mods to alter the feel if you find yourself agreeing with that. A throttle resistance is a personal thing, what's good for me might not be good for you and vice versa. 
but one thing I think everyone will agree on is that the throttle pedal crashes against its backstop with a distinct thud, something that's purely due to the hard materials used, with no cushioning at all between them. It just means that you feel that little contact shock through your foot every time you stick your foot down or release the throttle entirely. Fortunately, it's so easy to fix that it's silly it even needs to be. I took a tiny piece of rubber and fixed it to the contact points in between pedal and backstop. It took me about 10 minutes and made a huge difference to how nice the throttle felt to use. This one mod makes such a big difference to the perceived plushness when driving that it's madness that it wasn't done in production. Just listen to the difference in the noise before and after. This one thing makes the CSLs feel so much better and it doesn't cost a thing. So if you're getting these or you have some already, look into it. You can buy ready-made noise cancelling mods to solve this problem too. Now the clutch. Sadly, the clutch makes a little effort to feel much like a real clutch at all, it's gotta be said. There's no two-stage spring, not even an attempt at one, just a flat rate spring from top to bottom and it's fairly lightweight as well. There's not a vast difference between the throttle pedal and clutch pedal. Realistic, it certainly ain't. The biggest issue with a clutch pedal by far is the clanging of the pedal against the backstop and upon return, just like what the throttle pedal suffers from. Only you are usually stomping on the clutch quickly when using it, so the noise is worse here. Easily resolved with DIY padding or a ready-made mod to quieten things down, but it just feels like it shouldn't need to be done at all. How much would it really have cost just to put cushioning in these places during production? A quid? Whatever the case, it would have been so worth it. Now on to the load cell. So the load cell break is the real key to the CSL's decent performance to price ratio. All the serious simulators rely on the ability of a brake pedal to listen to your commands closely, which leads everyone getting into sim racing to a load cell system sooner or later. If you're considering CSLs, then I'll bet you don't already have a load cell brake, and if so, you'll be glad to know that the CSL has a good load cell system. It's certainly up to the job. No flimsiness and no sense of weakness at all. You can put a lot of force through them, which gives you loads of future headroom to move into as you build your tolerance and tastes for tough brake pedals. However, what you do need to know is that to begin with, you won't have any choice but to put a lot of force through the pedal, at least to make it actually move. Fanatec have selected an elastomer stack that's on the stiff side, like really stiff. This doesn't mean that you have to press it really hard to get the braking amount you need in game. The beauty of load cells is that they measure the pressure you apply alone. It just means that you need to press it really hard to get the pedal to move and actually feel like a typical brake pedal. The CSL load cell feels almost like pressing down on a digital bathroom scale where it doesn't really feel like you're making anything move yet the numbers climb as you press down on it. Bear in mind that I'm saying this whilst testing the CSLs on a full profile rig where I can absolutely beat the stuffing out of the brake pedal and the cockpit won't bend or move or anything but if you're on a wheel stand or entry level cockpit then this is going to make the brake pedal feel like a bit of a rock. This is definitely 100% going to come as a bit of a shock to a lot of people for which this is the first load cell brake they've ever had. I feel the need to state to all of you, this doesn't represent how load cell brakes typically feel, it's just how Fanatec chose to make this pedal feel. They stuck it right at the hardest end of the range for whatever reason, which is something that I feel very few people would have opted to do at a choice. For example, the club sports are much softer by default, as are even the Husingveld sprints. It's just the CSL load cell that seems to want you to work for it. Due to the rock solid brake pedal and somewhat light throttle pedal, you've also got a little bit of a situation where it feels like you need a shoe on your braking foot so you can't feel it so much, and no shoe on your throttle foot so you can feel it more. Almost like the brake pedal was designed for hardcore sim racers and the throttle pedal was designed for Sunday drivers. It's a bit of a clash. I've seen tons of comments from people asking if a load cell brake is meant to be this solid, the answer is yes, but it doesn't have to be. If Fanatec included alternative inserts to modify the feeling of a load cell to suit your tastes, then none of this would be an issue, and it would be a popular thing to experiment with and tune to your preference. But no such option is offered by them, so it's either get used to it or buy third-party inserts. 
It boggles the mind that Fanatec didn't see the clear opportunity to include various inserts or sell them separately like they did with the club sport pedals. It would have been a popular item and made the CSLs a far more appealing choice to far more people. Also, I'm not reviewing a new product ahead of wider release here. These pedals have been out for ages now and there's still no such accessories available. Companies like 3D Rap aren't complaining though, because for each of the criticisms I level at the CSLs, they've already made something for sale to solve it and that includes mods to get the brake pedal to just chill out a bit. So what about the CSL LC's older and bigger brother, the Club Swap pedals? I've mentioned them a couple of times now, are they worth spending the extra for and skipping over the CSLs entirely? It depends, really. The CSL's horizontal positioning option is one bonus for club sports don't have, but they do feel nicer overall with fancier pedal faces, a much better clutch, a throttle pedal with a bit more life in it, as well as an easily adjustable brake preload, which is an ability the CSL could really have done with because of its stiff pedal feel. If you have got the budget, and spacing out the pedals isn't something you'll need, then the club sports are a solid choice and will provide you with a little more lifetime over the CSLs before you get the itch to upgrade. They also look a lot better in my eyes, but this is all why they're double the cost, but they're not double the performance. A quick word on freestanding, some of you might already have pedals that are perfectly happy to sit on carpet. The CSL LCs will not, as demonstrated. Get yourself a wheel stand or cockpit, you'll need one sooner or later. Generally speaking, everything about the CSL LC pedals is defined by the fact that they have a specific job to do. They have to be as good value as possible, and overall, they are. There are some unnecessary gaps in the finish, most of which are resolvable very easily with some handiwork. Solving the clank of a throttle and clutch against the backstop, for example, can be done in 10 minutes with household materials and makes the set feel so much plusher and more expensive just by removing the clunkage. The load cell brake can be softened with cheap third party elastomers to introduce a more pliant pedal feel if you want to do that, and it's not very complicated to swap them. If both of these were never issues to begin with, I think the CSLs would be a much bigger hit. As it stands, I recommend the CSLs so long as you know that the load cell brake is very stiff and that the noisy pedals can be solved, because those two things are at the top of my list of potential causes for buyer's remorse. For 200 euros, they'll do the job well enough that you can confidently put them in your starting lineup if you're entering the world of proper sim racing, leaving you to allocate more budget elsewhere instead. And that's why I would pick them in a cost efficient sim rig. There's plenty that I would change about their design as I've mentioned throughout, but that's me. At least you know that if you feel the same way, you can turn to the accessory market and customize them. It's not like nothing can be done. I've been somewhat harsh on these CSL LCs, not because they're bad, they're pretty good in fact. It's more out of frustration that with some easy tweaks in the factory, they could be great, but instead it falls to the user to carry them out. Still, they're a reasonable amount of pedal for the price, and their job is to take all your beginners, hold your hand, walk you to the cliff edge, and push you into the pit of overspending. There we go then. So if you got the CSL LCs already, let me know what you think of them and what you wish you knew so that folks following in your footsteps can read your helpful advice. If you disagree with my points of view, then do say so as well, so I can take them into account. Check the links in the description as well, and thanks for using them. Pop a like and subscribe if you ain't already. Cheers again.